Good morning. I hope that the day is starting out wonderful with you and everything you have going on today. It's a new day. It's a beautiful day. And I'm here to make it extra special with some fascia stretches. Fascia stretching, working our core, finding mindfulness associated with our bodies is so important always and especially right now. We have so many different thoughts running through our heads and to be able to find a balance, to utilize all of these thoughts that you're thinking and feelings you're having, there's a massive connection with our fascia. And if you are creating extra health in your fascia, you're helping to balance out emotionally, mentally, and physically so many things that are happening in your life and physiologically to your body right now. We're going to go through a really fun little flow today. Follow along with me if this is your first time doing fascia stretches. Listen to my cues. If you feel a little bit confused, please feel free to reach out to me, ask me a question, and I'd be glad to help you. If you're enjoying what you're feeling, what you're seeing, please leave a comment, share with your friends. I would love everyone to learn about fascia stretching. There's a lot of great information out there about fascia, and it's growing and growing and growing. I can tell you from first-hand experience that once I started to understand fascia in a deeper, more connected way, I have never felt so good in my body, and that's as I'm getting older, where a lot of people will start to suffer from aches and pains and discomfort. I'm here to tell you that you do not have to anymore. If you have a specific injury, there's a lot of things you can do specifically. Um, and in a referred sense to your injury. But when you're doing a general practice of movement, whether it's yoga, walking, running, climbing, triathlons, you name it, fascia stretching is absolutely going to help you no matter what. Also, if you are someone who meditates every day, practices deep breathing, this as well will have you connect even deeper than you ever could imagine with your body. Let's get started. Again, let me know if you have any questions. Grab a mat or a floor um, somewhere uh, that you can lay down and have space. I have a blanket that I've rolled up that I'll use for maybe one of the stretches today um, when you're laying on your back. So a pillow, a blanket, towel, something like that. I also have a block today. It would be great if you had two blocks. I might even use my um, thermos. Um, or being near something like a couch or a coffee table would work well again. So let's get started. Fascia is connective tissue that runs throughout our whole entire body. It gives us our shape. It helps us move with the connection of our muscles and our nervous system, and we need to take care of it. When your fascia is stretching, it does not look like traditional stretching. You are not just lengthening, holding, and breathing, trying to go a little bit further. It's more active. There's active movement with it and resistance. So there's a lot of power behind all of that. When you do it, the nervous system makes a massive connection with your body and you're gonna feel fantastic. We're gonna start on your hands and knees. All right, if you need a little extra padding, feel free to roll something up underneath your knees. Hands are a little bit in front of your shoulders. Belly and rib cage is lifted. You wanna protect your spine by not letting that drop down. Lift it up, find a little chin tuck, knees apart, and feet together. Shift your body weight forward into your hands. Feel the connection of your hands. Take a moment to feel each fingertip into the floor. Your thumbs, pointer finger, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky. Next, resist your hands back, like they want to slide straight to your knees, but they're not going to move. You're adding the resistance by contracting those muscles. My knees naturally resist forward, and my belly engages. Bonus, core work. Keep resisting and pull your hips back a couple inches. We're gonna do babies, these little pulses to begin, and then we'll go into some fuller movements after we warm up. You start forward, resist the hands back, pull back. Start forward, resist back, pull back. As I'm coming forward, I'm not resisting. I always start here, I shorten the chest and my lats. And I add resistance and then movement. Your breath is moving naturally throughout. It's non-specific. Keeping that belly lifted, chin tuck. Here's five. 
you have control over how much resistance you're using for, you can use more or less, three, and two, I'm getting a little bit stronger in my resistance, and one. Dropping down to your forearms, make a fist with one hand, grab it with the other, scoot your elbows as close together as you can. Body shifts forward, resist your elbows and forearms back in this direction. Once you feel that, a little bit more around the back of your shoulders, pull back, little babies, just small little reps. You're not gonna move quite as much with this one. I'm actively pressing my forearms down and back as I use my body to pull back and create movement. Five, four, three, two, one more time. And one, back up onto the hands. We're gonna go a little bit fuller now. So this is a longie, I'm making these words up, but shorties and longies. Shift forward, belly lifted, chin tuck. Hands resist back. Now keep pressing your hands down and pull back a little bit more than we did to start. You don't have to go back to your heels. If you do, that's fine. I want you to stop your movement when you feel like you aren't resisting anymore. You can practice little adjustments. I'm moving my hands forward whoo, a little bit more to gain a little different stretch. Shift forward, hands resist back, pull back. Three more, make these a little bit stronger, fuller. Three, belly strong, use that core to connect all the pieces, your muscular system, nervous system, your deep core. Drop down to your elbows again. Shift forward, belly lift. Chin tuck. Resist those elbows back. Now try to go a little bit further than the first time you did this. Oh! Shift forward. Resist those forearms down and back. Pull back. I feel this one a little bit more between my shoulder blades, which is great because that area gets tight. Three. All the way forward. Shift. Pull back. Two. One more time. And. One, okay, turn your palms up. You're still down on your forearms. This, you're gonna resist your arms out like this. So now we're gonna roll side to side. So rather than forward, back, we're going right to left. Arms are down, palms are up, knees are wide. Resist your arms out. Once you feel it, lift that belly again and roll side to side. Reaching the shoulder towards the floor. Getting everything worn up or stretching that lateral aspect of that shoulder joint space. Keep resisting out. Side to side. Notice if you're moving with your ribs or just your shoulders. Ugh. Let's try a variation. Bring your elbows apart a little bit. Palms are still up, but I lost my core. Pull that belly in. See how this feels different. I'm not able to roll as much, but I'm feeling it in a different place in my shoulders. Good, keep up with this. If this is new, you'll feel a little bit tired from the exertion of energy, but I promise you'll feel energized after. Three, my wrist just cracked. Two, I'm resisting out. And one, Whew. take a seat. Just take a moment to feel, oh my gosh, everything is just almost vibrating, but I have an openness it's much easier to achieve better posture. A little bit of a chin tuck, shoulder set. So once I do this in the morning, I'm less likely to get bound up with a stiff neck and stiff shoulders from working throughout the day. It's a really good way to just release the tissues in the back between the shoulders so that this is easier to do. All right, let's move to the right to the left. It's still with the shoulders for a few more moments. Knees apart, feet together. Taking your hands to the sides. So you're just gonna take, I'm moving to my right, my left hand is still on the mat and my right hand is off of it. My resistance is taking my hands towards the opposite knee, although they're not gonna move. That's the direction of resistance. I'm activating and contracting my arms as if that's the direction they would move if I let them. Shift forward, hands resist to the opposite knee and then you're gonna pull back in the opposite direction of your hands. Shift forward, just take a couple small ones here. Five, four, three. I'm focusing a little bit extra on my hand that's on 
the mat. And one, now take it forward, pause, find your resistance. Once you have it, then really strong, keep it, roll that shoulder that's on the mat towards the mat. Forward without resistance, resist hands back, and roll. So we're targeting the shoulder a little bit more that's rolling. Let's take the hand that's off the mat, place it on top of the hand that's on it. Body weight starts over the hand, resist it towards the opposite knee. Pull back, roll down. Here's three. You can go at your own pace or you can follow with mine. Two, sometimes people like to go slower, sometimes people like to go faster. And down. Good, switching to the other side. We're gonna start with one hand on, one hand off. Both hands resist towards the opposite knee. So you're activating the muscles to make that happen and then you add your movement. Oh, opposite. Good. Any micro adjustments that you make is gonna just change where you're stretching the fascia. So it's not right or wrong, but just make sure you're not having pain. Let's do some babies. Resist the hands opposite and just go halfway back. Start forward. Good. So I'm just gonna kind of keep going through little baby reps here. Shift forward, resist back. Three. I'm gonna to start to pull a little bit with my rib cage on the right. Just for fun. Now let's add some long ones again. Take the hand that's off the mat, place it on top of the one that's on it. Resist that arm towards that opposite knee. Feeling it kind of in this area here. And pull back. Ooh, roll that shoulder down. Good. Anyone who has really kind of stiff shoulders, go gentle with this. Kind of peel back the layers of the onion. Just as long as you're getting your resistance in the right direction is really the main benefit. Here's three. I'm tighter on this side today. I'm feeling it kind of lower. Two, one more time. Shift forward, resist to the opposite knee. Pull it back. Woo, and one. Good job, shake it out. Take your hands and just give them a shake. However you want, we're just kind of waking up that nervous system, getting the blood flow nervous system all the way down to our fingertips after we just fascia stretched this whole upper back shoulder area. Good, take a deep breath in. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Shoulder blades relax down. Rib cage in, chin tuck. Posture is huge. I talk about it a lot, and there's a reason why. When you're stretching the fascia, things will change slightly in your body. And you want to reconnect, which is the focus of today, to all the different parts of your body. Let's do a little core work. Coming onto the hands and knees, we're going to make our way either into knee plank or full plank. I'm going to demonstrate a knee plank first. I'm going to bring my knees hip width apart and my elbows down. While I'm here, I'm lifting my belly, lifting my rib cage, chin tuck. Now add resistance. Let's make the fascia extra connected with this. I'm resisting my arms out. My forearms are resisting out, and now my knees are resisting out for five, four. My feet are pressing together. Three, two, and one. Stay there, but don't resist. Now resist the forearms in and the knees in. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Just neutral for five, four. Reactivate three. Lift your pelvic floor. Two, and one. Gently come out to rest. Whew. When you add activation and resistance, you're affecting the fascia. So wherever you can find opportunities to do that, do it. All right, let's make our way into some quad work. Grab that pillow I mentioned at the beginning, or that towel or blanket, and laying down. Take a moment to connect with the floor. By doing that, notice that your sacrum, that triangular bone at the base of your spine, is connected to the floor. A little bit of a natural curve in your lower back. Arms are lengthened at your side. Check in to see if you have more pressure in the floor with each of your shoulder blades. 50% body weight in both of your feet and legs, and now imagine your footprints, so the pad of the big toe, the pad of the pinky toe, and the heel. 
even pressure in both of your feet into the floor. Take a moment to make your adjustments. And start to take a deep breath in through the nose and very slow, gentle exhales out. I have almost a vibration happening in my legs by forcing that contact in my body weight distribution. As I'm breathing, you have two things happening. You have that stabilization, so you're using your muscles and nervous system. And then your breathing and your exhales are calming your parasympathetic nervous system. Let's take three more breaths here. One, two more. Challenge how much breath you get in, and then exhale. One more time. Inhale, full breath. And exhale. Right knee to your chest, grab underneath your knee, and reach your right leg up towards the ceiling. Left leg is going to come up and cross in front of your right ankle. We are stretching the quad or the front of the thigh on your right leg. So your right foot's going to push up into your left ankle. Once you feel your right quad engage, let your left leg win and push the foot down towards your butt. Lift up without resistance. Press your right foot up into the left, but your left is your winner, and it's going to press your foot down. Up without resistance. Good. So start going at your own pace here. Always know that you start up, resist up, and then your left leg pushes down. Good. My arms are strong, giving my right leg a lot of stability. And I'm strengthening my left hamstring that's doing the work to stretch the fascia in my right quad. This is why fascia stretching is amazing because you're getting core work, you're getting strengthening elements and you're creating deeper health in your fascia. Let's do two more, press it up. You might start to feel a little fatigue in that right quad as you should. You're doing a good job. And release, good. Bring your left foot down to the ground. We're going into right hip flexors. Level pelvis, tummy tight. Hands are gonna go into the front of your right knee. My right knee is as close to my chest as I can bring it. And then I'm going to resist my right knee, pressing towards my nose. But my hands are going to overpower and push it away. The benefit with fascia stretching is really at the beginning and through the movement. It's not about end range and how far you can go. That's actually traditional stretching, which we actually want to avoid, which makes Fascia stretching is safer because we're able to really increase true flexibility without overstretching. Two more hip flexors. Good. Knee to chest. You can lift your upper body up if you want to. Keep it up if you want to. Variations are there for you to try and rest. Good. Shake it out. Let's bend your left leg again. Flex your right foot and heels going to press straight down into the floor. Squeeze your butt cheek, your quad, your hamstrings. Press it down. We're grounding. We're reconnecting the flow of energy through that right leg that we just stretched the fascia in the quads and hip flexors. And let release. Excellent. Moving on to the next side. Grab left knee to your chest and reach your left foot up to the sky. Right ankle's going to come up and in front of your left. We're stretching your left quad from the thigh. Your right left foot kicks up into the right ankle. Once you feel that quad engage on the left, your right foot is going to bring that heel down. Straight and kick up, and right's going to press it down. Up, might get some knee cracks here, that's all right. Going at your own pace. Nice strong arms, let your breath flow. Left foot's kicking up, right foot's pushing it down. Here's whew, three. This is work, isn't it? Two, stay with it. One more time, you're doing great. And one. Whew. Bring that right foot down, left knee stays to your chest. All right, hands go to the front of your thigh. We're stretching our left hip flexor. 
I'm going to push a little bit through my right for a little extra support. Left knee presses in towards my chest, my tummy's tight, and I'm going to push my knee away. In, pressing it away. In, let your breath move through. Give your body oxygen. We will lift the head up. Let's do three more. Knee to chest. Tummy's tight, stabilize your posture. Press that knee in. Good, one more time, knee to chest. Feel it in the hip flexors. Tell your body where you want the work to come from. And let it rest. Okay, left leg down. Flex your foot, press the heel down into the ground. Squeeze your left butt cheek, your quad, your hamstring. Press it down, tighten the tummy. Five, four, three, two, one. Reconnect. Feet flat. Arms down on the ground. Post your pelvic tilt. Lengthen your lower back. Now press your lower back into the ground. Press down through your feet and your hands. Squeeze your butt cheeks as you press the hips up. Don't go too high if you feel tightness in your lower back. Then don't go any higher. Holding this here. Now I'm going to tuck my shoulders under a little bit. Press my hands as active into the ground as you can. Lower your glutes halfway and squeeze to left. And let's plug your heels into the floor and your hands into the floor. Create a fascia structure, a fascia foundation. Here's three and two. One more time. And one. Lower it down. You guys are doing good. Rolling to come up. Grab those yoga blocks if you have them nearby. I have one here and a water bottle. Anything you can. Fine, take a little coffee break if need be. Hamstrings, hamstrings. We've all stretched them, we all feel tightness in them. This is a really great way to make some change happen immediately. If you have lower back pain or knee pain, hamstring stretching is a very good thing to do if done properly and without pain. So if you're feeling any discomfort at any point, let me know, try to adjust, modify. If that doesn't work, we can find another version. That good old classic runner stretch that we've done before. We're going to start in that position here. I am going to be stretching the fascia in the leg that's in front. So for me, this is my left leg. You can start with either one. Feel free to roll something underneath your other knee if you want a little cushion. All right, here's where the blocks come in. If you feel more comfortable coming all the way down without really crunching and running the back, that's okay. Otherwise, let me grab this real quick, guys. If you have two of them, it would look something like this, and you can lift your upper body up. And that's where you could also use a coffee table or a couch in your body. I'm going to move this out of the way for fear of spilling. And square everything off. Hips, shoulders, knee in one direction. Since we're stretching the fascia in the front leg, we want to shorten the hamstring, so we come forward. Next, you're going to add your resistance. Your foot is going to press down and back. So you activate and contract your hamstring. Once you feel it, then the movement begins. Keep that resistance going as you pull your hips back. We'll start with those babies. You're starting forward and resisting. Pull back. Let's just do these little baby ones for a few moments, just warming up the tissue here. Right now, we're basically squared off. There's a million ways you can micro-adjust your position by turning your feet in more, your foot out more, by digging the heel down more, the toes down more. Everything adds a little variation. Here's three more babies. Three and two. You're always resisting the front foot back. And one. Let's add a full or a longing. Take it slower so you can feel. Ooh. I did a lot of these last night in one of my fascia classes that I took from my wonderful instructor, Bonnie. She's the one who taught me all this amazing stuff. And classes are awesome. So you're just going a little bit further back. Let's add a variation. Lift your toes up. Starting forward, shortening. Kick that heel back. You can dig your toes down and back. However you want your body to be distributed so you get the leverage you need. Come forward, resist. I'm lifting my toes up, I'm kind of using my blocks and walking back. Whew. 
Now let's try another variation so you can feel the difference here. Turn your toes out and you're still pulling back. Notice how different that feels. Forward, turn those toes out. Pull back. Let's do one more here. Find your resistance. Keep the resistance. Oh, you're going to feel great after it, I promise. Switch sides. All right. Woo. Did you guys feel that one? Okay. So now, other foot's in front. Square everything out to begin. Blocks or floor. Front foot resists back. Engage that hamstring. Once you have it, you're affecting the fascia. If you don't have resistance, you're not going to get the fascia. Know that you can use resistance in anything you're doing, even walking. If you take five minutes and just focus on your foot contact being a little extra sturdy into the ground as you're walking, you're going to affect the fascia. You're going to hydrate the fascia, create more youthfulness in the fascia. Breathe. Okay, we're just kind of working these little babies at the beginning, so not full range of motion. Just kind of working at the beginning. The beginning is really where the benefit happens. Start to play with it a little bit, add a little bit more resistance. Let's go for some lani. Start forward, give it a pause, find your resistance, keep it. Pull back. I dig my toes, kind of flip them under and back. My foot's coming up a little bit on this side. That's fine. Start four, raises back. Keep that flow. If you have kind of an area that's talking to you, which I do, all around my butt bone, make the work come from that area. Most likely you have dead uh, fascia or scar tissue, and this is what you do to help it. If it stays there forever, it's only going to make you feel more tight, more stiff, and he, as you get older, as you go through your days. This is the way to clear out that congestion. Add our variation. Turn your toes out or even move your foot out to the side a little bit. Still resist the front foot back and still pull back. I'm kind of on a little bit of the outside edge of my heel here. Holy moly, that feels good. And pull. Always resisting down and back, down and back. Let's do three more. Three, find, oh, I got it there. Two, if you're feeling it the way I am, this is what you should be doing. Awesome, and one, okay, and let it rest. Whew. All right, we're gonna finish up with some pigeon pose lateral hamstrings. So a little bit different than what we just did here. If this doesn't feel comfortable for you for any reason, whether it's your ankle, your knee, or your back, if you're trying and you're like, nah, I don't think this is going to flow very well, I'm going to show you the variation first. This is a pure formus fascia stretch that you are going to do if you feel the pigeon isn't going to be accessible to you. You're going to cross one ankle over the other knee, like a figure four, and both hands are going to go and grab to the outside of the knee that's crossed. You don't want to pull it in yet. You want to start with it open. You can come up with the head or stay down. Knee's going to resist away, so you're feeling the butt squeeze in the leg that's crossed over. Press your ankle into your thigh, and you're going to draw that knee across the chest. Open it, press out, and pull it across. All right, for those doing pigeon with me, make your way into downward dog. Take a moment here, plug the balls of your feet into the floor, press your hands forward slightly, Pull the belly up. Lift your right heel up. Press the foot, the ball of the foot as strong as you can down into the yoga mat as you drop the heel down. Left foot's going to come down. You're up on your heel. I'm sorry, your heel's up. Press the ball of the foot down. Lower the heel. Okay. Take a deep breath in and exhale. Take your right knee to your chest and drop it underneath you. I'm not at a 90 degree angle with my leg. My heel is kind of back, so I'm at more of a 45 degree angle here. Just kind of notice where your body weight distribution naturally goes and try to square off as much as you can in the front. 
you can take your ball the foot down and back for extra leverage. So rather than folding over into pigeon pose, you start up, grab these blocks or something if you feel that would be helpful to begin. Resist your front chin from the knee to the ankle down, directly into the floor, feeling the activation in that lateral hamstring. Keep it folding forward. So you're always resisting as you're folding forward. Again, it's not about how far you go, it's about the journey along the way. Connecting your whole body. Fascia is very dense in our lateral hamstrings, and it can cause a lot of problems. A lot of problems that seem like something else is going on. Pressing down, keep pressing down, breathing, lower the chest down. That's variation here. And then just shift just a baby bit towards the knee, pressing the knee down. Folding it over, over, over. Notice I'm never sitting down. My butt is lifted. Press it up. Resist the knee and the shin down, folding over. One more time. Woo. This is intense. Press it, keep it, lower. Good. Switch it up, downward dog. Pedal it out. If you're doing figure four, switch to the other side. Excellent, take a deep breath in here. And exhale, stay. Left knee to your chest, and finding pigeon pose. Digging the foot back. I feel like I have better leverage. Grab your blocks if you need them, or you can come up without hands. It actually is a little bit more accessible than it looks. Pressing knee to foot, the shin straight down. Feeling the activation of your lateral hamstrings here. Keep it and fold it forward. Ooh, this side's tight today. Always keep your resistance. That's a key. Press down. Keep pressing down as you lower. Good. You can kind of go at your own pace here as well. Each rep that I do feels a little bit different. We're at the end of the session today, so really give it your all. See what you can do with your body. Press down. Let's add a variation. I'm going to rotate just a touch towards the knee that's in front. Press down. And back up, press it down. Good job, you guys. Two more. You're doing figure four, hoping that's feeling good for you. One more time. Excellent. All right, take a seat. Ah, it's warm today. Winding down. Find a comfortable position, whether you're sitting in a chair, on the floor, against a couch, or just on your own. Take your hands to prayer and let your thumbs touch your sternum. Let's take an inhale. Exhale, soften. Let any tension melt away. Now connecting your thumbs, your pointer finger, middle finger, ring, and pinky. Feel the fingertips connect. Pull your rib cage in, chin tuck. Good. Take another inhale. Keep maintaining that connection. And exhale, soften your shoulders, find a chin tuck or bring your chin towards your throat. We're going to do a nerve clap at the top of the back and the neck. Keep your chin tuck as you drop your nose to your fingertips. Holding five, four, three, two, one. Looking straight forward, chin tuck, shoulder blades set. Press your hands together and gentle rocket ship up. Press your hands together, bring it back down to earth. One more time. Hands pressed together, find your fingertips, the whole hand. Feel the even resistance of both of your arms. Gentle rocket ship and gentle lowering back down to earth. And resting your arms down. Great job today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you love class today, let me know. I am going to put it up on my news feed for the day, but then I will have a private link that you can ask me for it and I can send it to you and then you can also share it with your friends. Enjoy the day and I'll catch you again soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.